Welcome back art students. In today's lesson we will create two fun 4th of July works of art. The Statue of Liberty is an enormous sculpture that stands on Liberty Island in New York Harbor. The statue was a gift from the people of France to the United States in 1886, almost 150 years ago. The statue is so big that people can go inside and take a tour. The Statue of Liberty is seen as a symbol of freedom for the whole world. For the Statue of Liberty lesson you will need black crayon, black sharpie, pencil, colorful crayons, water for rinsing your paintbrush, ruler, watercolor paints, and brush. Okay, to make our Statue of Liberty, we are going to divide our paper into four quadrants. You can do this by folding your paper in half or I'm using a ruler. I'm trying to find the center of my piece of paper. You'll have to measure and find the center of your paper. I'm going to draw a light line right down the center of my paper using the ruler. And then again, I'm going to find the middle of my paper here. You might have a different size paper than me, so you'll need to look for the middle. Maybe get a little help if you can't find exactly where the middle is. Okay. Make sure your pencil has a good eraser. We will be doing some erasing marks too. All right, so we're going to start with this line right here at the top. Okay, so here's your center. Just to the side, we're making the top of her head. I'm going to go up, it's a rounded line, and back down sort of in the middle of this quadrant and then sort of in the middle of this quadrant. This is going to be her head. Okay, and now I'm going to make her oval shape head. You're not getting the whole round head. She has her crown on top. So to do this, I want to leave a little bit of space at the bottom for her neck. So we've got the top of her hairline where her crown is. And we're going to go down to the middle line and come back up. Okay, now we're going to make her neck next. So we have the middle line here. We're going to draw a slanted line down on one side, and a slanted line down on the other side. We can erase that middle neckline now, only in her neck. Brush away all the parts that you don't need, little scraps. Okay, next we're going to make her crown. Okay, so we're going to draw a slanted line up, short slanted line, and another slanted line up sort of out on the other side, kind of just measuring with my eye. Those look about the same height. Now I'm going to connect those spaces. This line will be, it's not going to be a straight line across, it's going to be, it's going to curve up to that center line and then it's going to curve down. Okay, so it'll curve up and then it'll curve down sort of a rounded line, okay? You can erase that middle line now that goes right through the crown. Okay, now we are going to make the first point, okay? This is going to stretch pretty high up on the page and do this, I'm going to start very close to the top of the page, right in that line, and I'm going to make a slanted line down. I'm going to make it near 
this center line. I don't want it to be too wide because I have several points I want to fit on her crown. Okay, so watch. I've got pretty close to the top. It's a very tall crown. I'm going to go down close to that center line. Do you see how this line is slanted? Here's a straight line. This line is slanted. Now I'm going to do the other side. Slanted line next to that line. Okay. Now we can erase that little center line. And it pops out on top. You can erase that too. So now we don't have that line in the crown. Now we are going to make the two the two side points, okay? So starting with the tip of her crown, you're gonna make a slant up. Mine's going right off the page, and that's all right. And then a slant back down to the crown. One, two. Another, go to the other side. Slant up. Touching that point, slant down, right back to the crown. We're gonna fit, we're gonna try to fit two points in those empty spaces. It looks like I have a little more space here than that side, but that's all right. So to make those points, you can help yourself out by making a dot. Now these points are not going to be bigger than the center point or the side points. So they're gonna be about the same height. So I'm going to make this point here. See, it's not above. I'm going to make a point here. And then I can take, finding my point that I made, I'm going to come down, slanted line to my crown, down, sort of like a carrot shape. Here's another point, down, down. Okay, down, they're slanted lines, not straight, slanted into my crown. Okay, now we're going to make this design here in her, her crown. These are actually windows. You can, actually it's an observation deck, you can go inside and look right through that crown. Okay, to make these, we're going to make one straight line right in the center. Okay, now we're going to make another straight line to the side and another one. Straight line. Okay. So now we're just making these little windows and they're not perfect squares. They sort of kind of come, they slant out and then we close that shape. Slant out, close your shape. Slant out and close your shape. Okay, now remember if I'm going too fast, you can always pause your video and catch up when you are ready. Okay, we don't need this line that goes across our paper now. We can still use this center line, but we're going to erase the line that's right in the middle if you chose to make a line. Maybe you have a fold. Okay, now we're going to make her face. Okay. First, her hairline. Okay, she has these swooping, swooping hair that kind of comes down in front of her face. So we're going to touch the center and we're going to swoop down to the side. 
not too far down. We need to leave space for her face. If you went too far down, maybe you'll need to bring that line up. Swoop down to the side. Okay. Now in this space here, we have that line. We're going to draw the nose right in the middle. So we're not going to touch that line. It's just going to be just to the side of that line, right in the middle. Here's the top, middle, bottom, right in the middle to the side of the line. I'm going to make a line that comes down slanted and a little tiny line in. I've just made her nose down and in. Okay, now we're going to make her eyes. She'll have an eye on each side and they're not going to be round circles. They're going to be the shape of a, our eye, which is more of an almond shape. So we'll make the top eyelid. It's going to be rounded up and down. Okay, now that's the top. We're going to make the rounded line on the bottom. And again on the other side, the top line, rounded line up and back down. It's sort of like a long rainbow. And then another line on the bottom. Okay, now for this, for her eyes, we're going to make round pupils in the center. We're not going to shade them in. They're going to be, they're going to be green. Okay. All right, now for our lips, we are going to, in the middle of this space here, to the side of the line, we're going to make a line that comes up and down to that center line. Okay, now from that line, up and down. Now we're going to make a straight line right underneath that top lip line, like this. We're going to make those lines connect. So see how my line isn't connecting here? I'm going to bring that line down to make it connect. Now underneath, we're going to make the bottom lip line, and that's just going to be a rounded line underneath. Okay. Now we don't need this center line anymore, so go ahead and erase that center line. brush away any parts that you don't need. Okay, now I made my eye a little bit short on this side, so I'm going to just erase that a little bit. If you didn't get the shape that you wanted, that's what's great about a pencil. You can do a little correcting. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, all right. Now, I've erased those lines that are in her face. Nobody has a line in the middle of their face. All right. Now we've got her hairline here, and we're going to make two little ears to the side. Our ears will stay close to the head. They'll round out and in and out and in. Right underneath her hairline, round out, then in, out, and in. There's two. And now we're going to make her hair. Okay, so to make her hair, we're going to touch the top of her crown. We're going to keep this line close to her head. Come in and then down. Okay, so touch the top of her crown or the bottom of her crown where her hairline, this is her hair, and where her crown meet. I'm going to make a line down, close to the ear, in, and down. Okay. Touch her crown and the hairline, down, in a little bit, and down. Okay. We can go ahead and put our pencil away now and find your black Sharpie marker 
and we are simply just going to trace every line that we made. Okay, so let's start with maybe her crown here. Tracing the top of her crown. And all of her points up and down. And you're doing your best to stay on that pencil line, but if you go off that pencil line a little bit, it's all right. We're going to put paint on top and you really won't see it. Just try your best to keep your marker right on that line. Maybe you'll need to go really slow and pause the video to catch up. Okay, I have traced all of my lines with black Sharpie marker. Make sure you have traced every single line. So you might wanna pause and take a second. Did you trace her neck, her lips, her nose, her eyes? What about the ears, her hairline, all of the little windows in the crown? So make sure you have traced every bit. Now, before we add the rest of our colorful crayons to make the fireworks that are behind her, we are going to trace around her head, just on the outside. This is going to help keep the green color of her body green and then the black dark sky behind her black so the two colors don't mix together. Okay, so starting at the bottom, let's start, you're gonna press down kind of hard and you're gonna trace all the way around the Statue of Liberty, going all the way around up and down over her crown points. Okay, I've done around my Statue of Liberty. Now we get to make some fun fireworks. I have a couple that I'm gonna show you and you can fill your whole page behind her and put your fireworks anywhere you like. Um, I have one that I think is fun that's like a 4th of July, red, white, and blue. And to do this firework, I'm going to make an X wherever you can find space. 
and then a line through that X and a line down that X. So now I have sort of a star looking shape. Now I'm going to find a red and I'm going to just put some red, kind of scratchy red, right between those blue lines. I'm pressing down hard. The harder you press, the brighter those colors will show up when we put the paint on the paper. And now I'm going to use a little white. You won't see the white when I make it on the paper, but it shows up really nice and bright when you put the black crayon on. I'm just gonna start maybe at the top so I remember where I started. Scratchy white all around. So I have one here and maybe I'll make another one over here. Remember to make your firework, you're going to make an X, two slanted line, line down, line over, and a line right through the center, and a line right down the middle. Okay, now you can put in the red scratchy marks between. And then the white on top. It looks nice too if maybe if you take a little blue and make some sparkles that come out. When fireworks burst in the sky, there are so many little bits of flame and light. So you can really make it fun going all around your piece of art. So there are two nice red, white, and blue, our American flag colors. And now I'm going to make maybe, maybe a firework um, down here. This one's gonna be green. And I'm just gonna do the same. They don't have to be all of them too fancy. I'm just making those bright lights. You can take another color and go between those shapes like this. Or this is a fun shape of a firework. Instead of doing the X, you can just make a line up, a line next to it, all around. Maybe another one here. Making straight lines that go in a circle. And maybe I'll fill it in with a little yellow in the middle for a bright pop of light. And maybe a pink and red one next and then I think I'm going to re be ready to paint. Same. Really filling my page. Lots of color. Now for fun, you can go back and you know when fireworks are shot from the ground, they sort of, you can see the light of the firework and then they burst into colors. You can make some firework lines. To do that, go to your firework and you can make little broken up lines all the way to the bottom of your paper. Looks like they're shooting from the ground little broken lines. When I mean broken lines, it's not one straight line. They're broken. Up, down, 
lifting my piece of paper and maybe one here and there. I think they're all shooting up now. Okay, so we are ready to do our painting now. To do our painting, we're going to paint our Statue of Liberty green. So you'll need to get your paintbrush wet. Find your green. And you're going to do your best to stay right inside of her face and her crown. We're not going to get our green outside of, of her. Okay, so I've got my paintbrush nice and wet with green. I'm going to take my watercolor paint and I'm going to pull that wet paint all the way into her head. You can really start wherever you'd like on her face, but I think it's kind of nice to start in the crown and bring that paint down. Do you have any puddles, pools of paint? Take your paintbrush and push it down to where it's dry. You can really make quite a bit go a long way. Shading in her whole face, down into her neck and her hair. Her whole body is the same color. Okay, I have shaded in my Statue of Liberty. I'm gonna double check to make sure I don't have any white spots left. Looks pretty good. And now I'm ready to shade in my background. And for the background, we're going to use black for the dark, dark sky. So rinse your brush. Find your black. Now, do you see with our black and our watercolor palette, it's not very dark, but if you wanted to make it really dark after it's dried, you can go back and you can add more black on top of it to make it look nice and dark. The more you add, it needs to dry in between, you'll get a nice dark color. Do you see how this is a little darker? So you can let it dry, add more paint, dry, add more paint to make it as dark as you like. Okay, so we're going to go and give it its first shade of black. And you can go right over those fireworks because oil and water do not, they separate, they don't mix. But be very careful as you paint your black when you're going near the Statue of Liberty 
to not get too much water and go into your Statue of Liberty. We want to keep those colors separate. So you might want to paint really slow and steady when you go near her. Especially when you are going in and out of that crown. Maybe don't get so much paint water on your brush as you paint in that spot. Or if you get too much, pull that water right out. Okay, I think I have shaded in all parts of my Statue of Liberty. I don't see any wet or open white spots, so she looks pretty good. And all the fireworks behind her, gorgeous. And for the fireworks lesson, you will need tempura paint, water for rinsing your brush, paint brush, several Q-tips, and black paper. Okay, to paint our fireworks on our black piece of paper, you are going to need Q-tips to start. We're going to start with red. So I'm just going to use the tip. I'm not going to use the side of my Q-tip. We're gonna use these like little stamps, little round stamps. So I'm gonna just dab it into my red and I'm going to make this red, white, and blue nice um, firework here, okay? so. Find where you'd like to put yours. I'm going to put mine just to the side. I'm going to stamp down. I'm going to make a little circle with my red. You need to stamp down to get more paint to shade in those red dots. Go ahead and do that. So I have a little red circle. Okay. Now, red, white, and blue. I'm going to do white around my red. Stamp your Q-tip, a new Q-tip, into white. And you're going to stamp all the way around. See how these are getting a little dry? So I'm going to go around. I'm going to stamp my black piece of paper. And then have you noticed how I've left some space between each dot so they're not smudged together? And I'm going to go back and give each little white dot a little more paint, okay? Red, white, what's next? Blue, okay, stamp my blue. I'm gonna go around that white, leaving space between each dot. Okay. 
I'm going to do one more circle of color, red, white, and blue. I'm going to do red again. Each time I go around with my dots, my circle gets a little bigger. Okay, now white. blue. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to use my paintbrush. Find your paintbrush and I'm going to make some red long lines that come out from my firework. Okay, to make these lines, I'm going to start close to that blue line, that blue dot. I'm going to put my paintbrush down and I'm going to swish it away. Swish it away. So it's darker, maybe even a little wider at the bottom, and then it'll get thinner towards the bottom. This looks like it sort of exploding into the sky. Put your paintbrush down and swish it away. Down and swish it away. Not, don't bring it down too far because we're going to add some more fireworks down here unless you just want to do one big firework. These are going to go right off the page. Okay. Now I'm going to go rinse your brush. Dab off any of that extra water. And I'm going to use blue now. And I'm going to do the same sort of effect just between the red lines. These are shorter lines. And now for fun, I can take, rinse your brush. I can take my white Q-tip that has white paint on it and I can go around and maybe do a splash of light right at the tip of my red or blue, wherever you like. Now these went right off the page so I don't have to do that. Okay, so now two other, um, Fireworks I wanted to show you is maybe this one here. This one's kind of like those twirly, swirly ones. And then we'll do one that sort of explodes from the ground up. Okay, so let's do a twirly one here. And we're gonna use our paintbrush for this. So make sure you have a nice clean rinse brush. And for this one, I'm going to use orange. And I'm going to be making sort of a hook. In and hook it. In and hook. So I'm going to start in the center. I'm going to go in and hook. In and hook in. In, hook. Down and hook. Do you see how my hooks are all kind of going in the same swirly direction? Down and hook. Down, hook. One more. Okay. Just tracing over some of my spots that aren't very dark. Okay, now maybe I'm going to add a little yellow, a little bright burst of light right in the center. So I'm going to rinse my brush because I'm going to be using yellow next. I'm 
maybe I'll put yellow right in the center. Some dabs of yellow and maybe a little splash of light coming out in the center. Okay. Now if you want to make those shoot up from the sky, from the ground, maybe those little dots showing you that it just was lit on the ground and then it shot up into the sky. Now let's do maybe this one that started on the ground and sort of explodes into the sky. Okay, so for that one I'm going to do green. I rinse my brush. And for this one I'm just going to make a V up. And then up in the center. And then maybe a couple small lines in the middle. Rinse my brush. I'm going to add some blue. Maybe a little blue in there. I like the really colorful fireworks where you, they may start one color and then you see lots of other colors after they explode open. So there's a little blue in there, maybe a little yellow. I'm just putting those colors right on top. Try not to take away all of the other colors, but can put colors right on top and then maybe we'll make those lines coming up and then for all my empty space here I'm gonna make those sort of star fireworks that we made for our Statue of Liberty so I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm going to start with red and I'm just going to make an X cross it and down Keeping my paintbrush red, an X, cross it, and down. Maybe one down here, X, cross, cross it, and then down. Okay, now I'm gonna add maybe a different color. I'm really gonna fill in all that empty space. Maybe yellow. X, down, and cross. And it's okay to overlap. X, down, and over. Maybe one down here. Maybe some blue. maybe a little orange and then I think this looks like a beautiful bright 4th of July sky. I love watching fireworks. Okay, that looks fantastic. Very festive. Now you have two great works of art for the 4th of July. Thanks for painting with me today. See you next time. Bye.